All right, Tom Sclafani here from uh, Coach's Choice USA, and I'm with Joe Fenelon from New York Girls Hoops right here, uh, who's got... He's been absolutely great for girls basketball in New York City, and he's been out to a lot of our events out in Jersey. He's met quite a few people. Uh, Joe, you know, I, I wanted just to talk to you really about with recruiting. You've been around it so long and really entrenched in it. Um, my question to you, and, and we're trying to help out younger girls coming into the game right now mm -hmm. to know about stuff. If, if you had a daughter, being as a parent, who is saying the ninth grade, how would you take her through recruiting if she was a pretty good player and you know, maybe having Division I looks or, or whoever, but how would you take her through that? Well, first, first, first I would take her to a small, more intimate type environment like this before the July evaluation period because mm -hmm. this, this would probably be her first time going out you know, this time she comes out, she sees some coaches, some D2 coaches. It wouldn't spook her. Mm -hmm. So that would just prepare for July. But she would still get the, the, the elite competition. Right. Like, you know, you got kids like Kate Downey that plays for Empire Blue Flame. She had 30 offers before she decided on Fordham. Mm -hmm. So you have a kid like Kadasia Bailey going to St. John. She's here. You know, like, that way your daughter would at least get to play against those type players and you would see exactly where she stands, what, what she needs to work on before the July period. So this is a great event, like a great tune-up event before April and July. What would you also tell her, let's say all of a sudden, you know, coaches are saying come up on an unofficial visit and then eventually the official visit, you know, how would you kind of guide her looking at, you know, some of the schools that way? Um, Each situation is different. So it, it all depends on you, you have to kind of know what they're looking for mm -hmm. because, you know, they're, they're probably going to say the same thing to 10 to 15 other kids. So you just got to feel comfortable with your relationship with the staff before you invest. But most of the schools won't offer you a scholarship until you're on campus unless you're a blue chip athlete. See, I think that's great advice because I think sometimes kids, when they first hear from a coach, you know, be it a letter or they call, they're they allowed to call them, think they're the kid that they want and don't realize how – you know, there might be five, ten other people at that position that they're looking at. I think the key thing is you're doing your due diligence. They're going to do their due diligence. You, you have to do your due diligence. You have to figure out, well, how long has the staff been together? Do they plan on staying together? Mm -hmm. um, how many kids do they have in your position currently there? You can't worry about the other ones that are recruiting because you don't control that. But you do know who's there when they graduate. Do do some do some homework. Like, figure out, you know, do they play juniors? Or, Mm -hmm. Or is it they're going to bring in – you just got to know what's going on. I would just say just do your homework because each situation is different. Well, that's pretty good advice. How about with the event here, so many kids you've seen, you know, like who, who do you like, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, kids that maybe you're seeing for the first time? Well, I've seen a lot of them before. But one of the kids, one of the kids that kind of stuck out, stood out this morning, was Allison Campbell from PA Central PA Dynamite. Okay. Um, I, I remember her more being a shooter, but now I see her putting the ball on the floor more, attacking the, attacking the rim, rebounding. She had a, she had about two or three other teammates that I think are legit, at least mid major type kids. Um, Jaylene Brown from Scanlon. Mm -hmm. um, usually she never plays the point. So last year, Delfina Sparks was the point guard there. They have Kateri Poole at her high school. So right now, as it's junior, she's playing a point on Scanlon. So that's something I didn't know she can do. Mm -hmm. So that's going to probably be really not good for her in this, this summer. I've seen the, the one kid I, I really liked was uh, the kid um, Faye Parker, who played with Next Level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, big kid. Uh, nice. Just saw a lot of good things. She's only a sophomore. I thought she looked pretty good. You know, do you have thoughts on her at all? Well, I, I liked her. I thought she caught the ball well. She played hard. She ran. She was physical. And she went from free throw line to free throw line. She didn't play the score. She was just out there playing hard. Another kid that caught my eye was a kid from um, the Lightning organization in Jersey, um, Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Like, flat-out shooter. Like, if she can learn to put the ball on the floor. I, I think the last game she probably had about 15 or 20 points. Um, University High School, about a 5'7 kid, shooting guard shot the lights out today. And she plays in our organization, and uh, she plays also with John Lornizak a bit, you know, and uh, going around. She's a very good player. Good there job. There's also a guard on that team for Roselle Catholic. Can't think of her name, but pretty good player. Team scrappy team. Team people should take a look out of. I think the teams in the NEC or even the Black College MEACs, they should definitely take a look at those two kids. Okay. I appreciate all the time, and let's get back and watch a little more basketball. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.